All right, Coach, uh, the bye week, some staffs, they really do a self-evaluation. Some staffs like to sneak peek ahead. How did you guys spend your bye week? Yeah, we did both. I mean, we did both those things. Uh, you know, we had three good work days on the bye week, and uh, on those days we, we looked at ourselves and uh, tried to say, you know, what do we need to improve on and what do we need to build on at the same time. I mean, there's some things that you go, hey, we're doing, we're doing better than we thought we were here, and then there's other things you go, hey, we, we definitely need to make some corrections on this. And uh, it also gives you some free time when you can either take a peek at some other teams you've been wanting to watch or get a jump on, on the next team, which, uh, you know, for us is the 49ers. And we did all those things. Everybody came to work uh, this morning. Uh, what was the, the mood of the team? They were off all week. Uh, they're coming off of a win. Guys are, are hopefully some bruises are healing up. So what was the state of the team this morning and now getting ready to move forward? The locker room, they, they seem like it's ready to kick in here and get on a roll. Yeah, I mean, five days off and obviously coming off a win on Monday night football, those guys getting some time off, uh, getting to rest up, uh, go see their families or go back to their college or their hometown or whatever whatever they did to get out of town. Some guys, I had to talk to a couple guys that went sightseeing in, in bigger cities. But uh, there was a good vibe today. I mean, today was team picture day. Sometimes that can be kind of a, a downer. You got to put the uniform on, go over to the stadium, take the picture. But that went as smooth as could be. We went out, had about an hour and a half practice, worked with uh, a lot of our younger guys. Now, when I say we worked with our younger guys, our younger guys have been playing a lot. Yeah. So. Uh, it, it was just good to get out there and get back on the field, and then we'll really drill down on San Francisco come uh, come Wednesday morning. Well, it sounds like yesterday uh, Coach Kelly wasn't really sure which quarterback he wanted to go with. Now it sounds like it's going to be Colin Kaepernick this week. I was It was almost like you were preparing for two different quarterbacks again almost like the Carolina game, two different styles. Yeah. But do things change that much? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so, number one, because uh, people don't realize – uh, Blaine Gabbert was, was a leading quarterback rusher in the NFL going into last week. And Gabbert is a lot better runner than he's given credit for. So, you know, people just know more about Kaepernick as a runner. Because a couple of years ago, he was a dynamic runner. And I, I think he had like uh, eight carries and averaged about eight yards a carry yesterday. Uh, so I, I think they're going to run the same offense. The, the, when I watched the tape of what they were doing against Buffalo, uh, they're, they've run more zone read, t zone read plays than anybody else in the NFL. You, you gotta, you gotta line up and defend zone read. Now, I think one of the one of the things that will help us a little bit is last week, the week before the bye, going into Carolina, when we didn't know if Cam was going to play, we worked a lot on uh, quarterback run type plays going into Carolina. It didn't come to fruition because we didn't find out till day before the game that, that he wasn't going to play and that it was going to be Derek Anderson. So we got a little bit of carry over there and got, got a little bit of extra work on it. And, uh, you know, that'll definitely be the uh, whoever plays quarterback. The main guy you got to stop is Carlos Hyde. Hmm. Str not strategically, but is there a, a discipline that you have to instill on the defense when you play against a, an offense that features a quarterback who can take off at any time? Sure. It's a assignment football. It's right back to – uh, when you were coaching in college and you were playing against an option team. I mean, it's uh, who's got the dive, uh, who's got the quarterback, who's got the pitch. I mean, it, it really it really is. That's exactly the way our defensive coaches talk about it. And uh, you've got to be disciplined to not let your eyes wander and follow the, follow the fake. I mean, someone's got to tackle the running back. Someone's got to tackle the quarterback. Someone's got to, be, got to be ready for the pitch or the bubble screen or whatever they have. I mean, nowadays with, the, with this spread system, they got a lot of different versions of it. Right. And finally, I had mentioned earlier the guys in the locker room this morning just seemed like the, the mood was upbeat. And uh, it's hard to look beyond one day or one game. But I mean, do you get that sense from everyone that, you know what, this, we, we've, something's kicked in here. If we can get healthy, we feel like we've got everybody in the field we need to have and, and we can get in a position to to make a move here well like you said the key the key to that is health and uh but healthy or not we weren't very healthy last week and the guys went out and executed the game plan that we needed for that game and from here on out it might be similar to that every single week i think the main reason our guys were in such a good mood today i know what happened for me i don't get to watch much tv during the week or during the regular season but I got to see all those funky commercials with you in the referee suit, <laughs> and uh, I told I told Russell Shepard and Charles Sims I hadn't seen that bad of acting in, in quite a long time. Well, wait, wait, the referee side or the player well, side? Well, I'll yeah, let the fans they, be the judge on okay, that. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs>